I, I can't remember if we mentioned this the last time, though. It started out, and I'm stealing this from um, one of the announcers for the AF. We talked to Tom, talked to him at the combine. He said it's kind of a second chance league more than it is developmental league, and I think they want to work it into a developmental league. Yeah, but it really is like the Charles Johnsons of the world having another opportunity to play. So how do you sort that out? A guy that's about 30 years old, and that's the he's thing. showing the same NFL talent that he showed a few years ago, but it's just at the AAF level where right. it looks like the best receiver. You know? So that's the thing. I, I don't think that Charles... I mean, Charles Johnson probably deserves another shot at the NFL if you're basing it purely off his AAF tape, but I don't think that it's worth it, right? You look at Charles Johnson, he's had several shots at the NFL. He's 30 at this point. You, I mean, what's, what's the upside? Well, there's also, I think the NFL, I, this would be another really good video for us to do, um, and just numbers that we need to wrap our heads around. I think there's a saturation of receiver talent in the NFL. I think there's, there's different positions that go through cycles. The quarterback position is going through this right now. Like Ryan Tannehill is a, a viable starting quarterback. He's a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. He has a backup job. I mean, honestly, I think Sam Bradford over the last couple of years has been a viable starter. Right. You know, so there are viable starters either in backup roles or, you know, just not with jobs. And then I think the receiver issue is the same. There's a lot of these reclamation first round receivers. Like what would John Ross do in the AAF? You know, if he was hit, if he was truly hitting the trading block this offseason. Yeah. You'd rather John Ross than a Charles Johnson. John Ross would probably go to the AAF and be the best receiver. Right. right. So there's a lot. That's what he's competing with. That's the tough thing to wrap your head around. It was like being an independent baseball player, Sam. It's like, man, I'm dominating independent ball. And it's like, oh, you're just another, just a guy, just a jag middle reliever. Right. It's yeah, all that, perspective. That's the analogy I, that came immediately to my mind. Anytime I can relate it to my baseball career, we have to. So do. I don't, I just don't think there's a point in saying, all right, let's see if we, let's see what Charles Johnson has second time around. I don't see the upside there. But there are some players, I think, where there is. So Keith Reeser, uh, cornerback for the Apollos, I think. Orlando. Orlando Apollos. Yeah. He's been tearing it up. He's been playing extremely well. 93.4 grade. Right. Now, Reeser is a player. He's got a ton of pass breakups, picks, all that kind of thing. Um, he's a player that was in the NFL, drafted back in 15, I think, 14 by the 49ers in the fifth round. But his NFL career was 481 snaps old. 351 of which came in one year in 2016, right? Where he didn't play horrendously, but whatever. Basically, you've got a ton of not given game time. Bounced around on practice squads, did, you know, was buried on people's depth charts. This is a second shot for him. He's killing it in the AAF. He's still only 27 years old. So he's a player where you say, okay, there, there is legitimate upside here. He was a draftable prospect. He didn't get a great shot at the NFL level. He's destroying a lower level of competition. Here's a guy we can bring back in and see if he's gotten better than the last time we evaluated him at the NFL level. And that's at a position of immense value at yes. corner where it does actually, it makes a ton of sense. And receiver makes sense to just throw a lot at the wall and see what sticks. But corner, especially, throw a lot at the wall and see what sticks. So a guy like Reeser certainly should, should get a shot. What about J. Ron Elliott? I, I think there's a few um, edge pass rushers that have all played pretty well they're all the sort of former nfl guys yeah. that have been you know on that roster bubble area i think a few of those guys will probably get a second look because of that elliot was like he we, we've touted him as mr preseason the last couple of years always dominates in the preseason the thing i always say about edge defender though is there's there's 64 jobs in the world starting edge roles and it's something that the nfl finds pretty well there's a lot of good yeah. edge defenders out there so it's kind of tough to crack the top 64 but being a rotational edge that can get after the quarterback is valuable and something Elliott probably could do at the NFL level. One player that isn't going to come up in our list, our roundup of players that do deserve a second shot, but everybody else is going to be touting, is Trent Richardson. Oh, right. Yeah. Because he's scoring touchdowns. Um, Trent Richardson is not actually playing tremendously well. He just happens to be giving the ball a ton inside the five-yard line. And if he ever does have good plays, they're within the five-yard line. So his numbers, when it comes to touchdowns, look great, but he's still not averaging a particularly good, healthy or a particularly healthy yards per carry rate. He's not grading particularly well. There are multiple running backs we have graded higher than Trent Richardson right now. And the bottom line is, we haven't seen anything throughout this time in the AF to say, yeah, you know what? He's the guy from Alabama rather than the guy from the NFL. Is he averaging two point six per attempt? I'm, I got a little it, bit. Yeah, I have it unfiltered from no plays, but yeah, pretty much. But 10 touchdowns. 
Yeah. Or Naya, whatever he's got officially. Yeah, so that's just pure volume. Yeah. That's just pure volume. And he is, like, he's A, being given the ball a ton within inside the five. Like, that's their offense. But also, if he does have a good play, like his, some of his carries within the five have been really good. It's just that those have been his best plays. Right. So, it's again, it's skewing perception a bit. Yeah. So, he's pretty much the same guy. He's forcing a ton of missed tackles that aren't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. That is Trent Richardson. Plus, you know, running back. Well, yeah, but I, so this is the thing, right? Is that there's a ton of people saying, "Oh, the guys that are, the guys earning a second shot, they're the running backs." Like, well, not really. I mean, you know, I mean, not if teams are smart. I mean, this right. is again. I think if if NFL teams are going to use the AAF properly, it's where can where could you have the biggest wins? Can you steal an offensive lineman that's developed over the over the course of his time there? Can you steal a coverage player that's developed? Could you steal a tight end eraser? A guy that's shown some skills that maybe that weren't on film, doing somewhere else, something else. To me, that's where an NFL team is going to find proper value in this league. Not finding another replaceable running back. Yeah, we've got a thirty-year-old uh, receiver. The other guy I think that's worth mentioning, purely because um, it's an offensive lineman, and the league, the AAF, has an offensive lineman problem the same way the NFL does. Consequently. If you've got somebody standing out there, it's probably worth taking a shot at them. Let's see what the numbers look like here. Uh, Jordan McRae. Oh, yeah. Who was uh, Central Florida, drafted by the Packers, I think. Again, yeah, played a little bit with the Pack. Right, played a little bit, but, you know, ends up being dumped out of the league. Now he's with the AAF, and he's one of the few people on the offensive line that's actually grading well. Now, it's not universally grading well, but, again, he's the standout offensive line, offensive lineman, in a league with some offensive line problems. So and playing probably center. Worth, yeah. Probably worth taking a look at for an NFL team somewhere. That's the other option there. Right? He's a guy that's played center that played guard a little bit at the right. NFL level. That, you got some versatility That can be there. significant for players. Yeah. It's not just, you know, anywhere in the, in, in the interior is interchangeable. Well, it's just like you're finding Chuma Adoga as this mid-round. I mean, finding of this, you know, there's 64 tackle jobs too in the world. Finding a guy that can pass protect is so valuable i think being creative in how you find that whether it's a mid-round chuma adoga from usc whether it's uh you know late bloomer right. I mean, at the aaf that the, eventually pans out the bottom line here is we're not necessarily saying any of these guys are future pro bowlers but there are plenty of players on nfl rosters right now that have no business being employed in the right. nfl there are guys here that could steal roster spots and at least bring something contribute positively to a team so there you go if you guys want your AAF data, it's all part of your PFF Elite package. We said we, the fans are going to be dying for this. They're loving it. So, uh, well, anytime it's you available, can, you can give a Johnny football grade. You've, you've got to put one out there. Yeah, we've got to put it out there. Right. So, we've got grades on everybody in the AAF with your Elite package. It's all in premium stats 2.0. Um, so, you just change the league from NFL to AAF. Yeah. Top left hand corner is a little drop down along with season and weeks. You can just drop it down from NFL to AAF and see all those grades. 